host name with the help of playbook okay so are you speaking of a host name of a system yes yeah if that is the case what is the linux command for to do it execute that that's it okay i'll i'll come back to how to execute the raw linux statements okay raw linux statements konni konni saarlu manaku automation cheyadaniki modules dorako we might not have modules and you might be asked to execute the direct linux statements okay that i would discuss at the last but yesterday in the commonly used modules you might have seen remember these names script exec right execute okay execute and script are basically the ways where you can call raw commands okay but the problem with that is they are not idempotent they are not idempotent what do i mean by idempotent same result will come yeah but whenever you are using exec or script you are basically calling some linux or a script that has to be idempotent ansible cannot do anything about idempotence so that's it okay so exactly we would be executing the same command okay from execute module okay it's okay we'll we'll come back to that there there is one uh, a bit more important aspect which i have to discuss before that okay fine okay so first thing is let us make our stuff ready okay and then basically i need to log in into aws and start those machines back okay and let me start our machines which are required for us to continue on answer so. and then i would put a filter i am interested in only machines which are in running state okay control machine came alive and this is the first machine which i wanted to connect to it so copy this okay and now i'd become a user where is that we have written yesterday the code playbooks yeah in home comma ansible right yeah cd playbooks and uh, these were some of the things which we have written yesterday right yeah now let us proceed a bit further and let us have a look at commonly used modules and let us go after each and every module in the documentation and let us let us try to understand what that is for okay so commonly used modules we should be aware of it you should be able to write it uh, at least the basic part of it okay fine because that is those are the things which will hit you in day in and day out mostly okay so
yeah so this is what we want to look look at okay so let us look at one command one after the other okay and then uh, we would be basically able to understand what these are for okay so let me start with a module called as user okay so for any module the easiest way to google it is just call it as ansible module user and you would be directly taken to the documentation of it mostly in most of the cases okay okay so what is this meant for it is meant for managing user accounts but if you want to manage windows by any chance it is not meant for that use win underscore user for that okay so we are speaking only about linux machines no windows windows machine as of now okay so these are all the properties which you can put in okay now if i want to add a user uh, there are multiple ways of doing it i can give ssh key and all of that like what ansible creates pem files and basically associates if you want to do the same thing you can do even that okay so how can i basically write it okay so whenever you are looking into it there is one important aspect always in this table you are saying this required right okay the first after parameter the second column is required please go through this once again and if you see what is required over here so that is the minimum thing which you have to enter if you don't enter that it would give give an error for example here in this case it is saying that name of the user is mandatory so you can't skip that property okay let us come down a bit okay and there are some other important properties but those important properties what they have is they might have default values okay for example create home whenever you are creating a user create home okay is not required but the default value of it is yes so whenever you do user and then hyphen hyphen name ansible then it creates a home directory for you if you don't want that to happen then put the no over here right make sense yeah so you have to look at these two possible values first and then whenever you are trying to write a value of anything please try to look if there are any valid values for that thing for example force there are only two valid values to this okay and if you come a bit down okay state present and absent if you want to create a user use a state called as present if you want to delete a user use a state called as absent so that's how it goes okay so three important values and then you would have comments just this will help you to write a very basic stuff also it's it's very easy for us to find it up make sense right so i'm not going to create a user i i i'm i'll be leaving it for you so if i have to create a user i would just write it over here i'll not execute it i want you guys to execute it okay for example yesterday we have written tomcat installation okay so let us assume that i want to create a user called as tomcat now so what is that i would start with i would go into the task i would start at the same position i am at the same column yes name okay create tomcat user and what is the module which i am going to use now i am going to use a module called as user okay and in this user i would be using something called as name and name of the user which i want to create is tomcat that's it okay and then state is required right so let us go into state what is the default value of state so there is no need for me to write state if i want to create a user because even if you don't write state it would take the value of present only when you want to basically delete it then there is a need for you to write it but we will still write it because it increases readability state present another default value aina why do we write it as because this we want to make it readable to the user to understand that we are creating user out of this step just by looking at user name he might not know it or there is a chance that he might be confused so that's why we would be explicit about it but even if you don't write that state line it is going to create a user okay make sense right now i want to work on the second commonly used module which is called as group password just look at the other attributes how do i set the password everything is in the ssh key code ichadu and password endu kodu obviously right okay 
Now, the second module which I want to work is, let me go into the all modules. But all modules, the problem is it is difficult to find it because there might be many multiple modules which contain the world code as group. So for example, if I search group, see if you, you find many. Because it is just not user groups. There are many other groups in Ansible modules. So always the safer bet is Ansible module group. Okay. Now generally whenever you create a uh, user, you would try to add user to that group. For example, uh, uh, admin group or whatever group it is. Okay. So if that is the case, how do I work on it? Okay. Fine. GID required? No, it is not required. But if you want to specify, yes, you can. Name is mandatory. So, and the status, same, present and absent. Even if you don't give anything, it would try to create the stuff because the default value is present. And then, is it a system? No. Okay. If yes, a group is created in the system group. If you want to create a system user, then you would be going with this. So, how do I write a group? Simple group, name of the group, and then present, much like the user. So, for example, this Tomcat user, okay, I'd be creating a group for it, okay, create Tomcat group and group. What is the name of the group? I'd give it as Tomcat itself. Okay, state present. This is not required, but still I am writing because the person who reads it understands that I am trying to create a user. Okay, and then apart from this, okay, so you are seeing group add, group delete, and group mod. Okay, so these are the requirements on the host. Fine, so if you want, you can get into these activities. I am not getting into this because this is a very basic activity. And you would find the directly playbooks of all of this choice. Okay. So second one is also done. I'm interested in this one. This one looks somewhat interesting for me. So Ansible module and let me search if I can find something called as command directory. Come on guys. Okay. Command module. Okay. By the way, this command doesn't guarantee item potency. Whenever you use this, item potency is not guaranteed. So whenever you are using command, it becomes your responsibility as an Ansible developer to basically correct it. Make sense? Okay. So let us see an example of command. Okay, forget about the register which you are looking at over there. Okay, there is command called as cat, etc, motd. What are they? Okay, and if you if you come down, basically you are seeing something like user bin make database dot sh arg one and arg two. Okay, what are they? They are basic Linux commands. Okay. You remember me that I had a question while I was starting the class saying that how can I change the host name, right? Now I'd be using a command and in command I'd be writing a raw Linux statement to change the host name. That's it. Okay. Command is to execute raw Linux statements. Are they item potent? No. Because the command which you execute, it becomes your responsibility to make it item potent or not. For example, you create a file from here. Okay. And you have written a code called as touch here. Touch some file name. Okay. And next time also it will try to execute that. It would not, it would not verify whether the, if the file is present, then only I have to touch it. That becomes your responsibility. Okay. So whenever we are working on command module, remember item potency is not guaranteed. Okay, so avoid command as much as possible. And uh, command is what is the Chalaman admin says it up in and Linux commands. 
they they are well aware of linux commands and they try to use something like command in uh, uh, ansible and exec in chef where they can execute raw linux statements but the problem is they miss out the basic property of configuration management which is item potency okay so use this only when there is no option okay use this as an extreme end case or whenever you are using it try to guarantee item potency because whenever you are using a command statement it becomes our responsibility to do that okay so now for example there is already something called as he want to remove some var logs folder so that's why he has done it but every time it will remove it will not see whether the folder is present or not it would blindly try to execute that command okay fine so let us execute a very raw linux command from here okay so ansible okay i am not okay so ansible minus m command okay so this is the same playbook execution but i am using the ad hoc command way if you remember we have used ansible minus m ping all right okay so let us just have a look at this ansible command once okay there are there are certain things which we need to understand about this command okay so let us start from so ansible and then minus a is what module arguments right and then this is something which you want to pass now because ping doesn't have any more any parameters but now we are trying to run we are trying to run a module which is called as command and this has arguments okay and now here cat at c slash motd and where do you want to run this command let us assume that i want to run this command on db server okay it 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 will not display the value okay i'll come back to what why that is okay this we we have to basically work out in a different way but let us do one okay so we got some more information what is that i have done I have added something called as minus v so let me do one more activity so now what is happening it is doing bit more okay the problem is an approximately 6 or 7 connection nothing works sir pillow
गैस हमें ऑडिबल या सो फाइन so i had to run the same command again so that to understand the context of it so if you want to have a detailed look of what basically ansible does okay so let us execute this command i think we had done it already right oh no it has lost it okay ansible Minus M. I want to execute module call s command, and for that I want to give an argument, which is anything, any any uh, argument cat at c slash m o t d, and this I want to execute on db. I want to execute on one machine. So when I do it, it says that it is success. Okay. and now i want to understand what ansible is working on so i want to increase the number of logs which is displayed on the console so what i would do is i would execute the same command but i would add something called as minus v okay. then it is giving me some information saying that it is using this configuration file okay and now i want to go one level deeper so i'd be giving minus v and now it it tries to tell that okay that is a configuration file this is a configured module and your module is present at, at the following path and ansible python's location is over here and it it gives you some more elaborate information of what is happening okay and then there is something called as running handlers and all of that okay and now i would execute the same command and this time i'd make it triple v so this will be the most elaborate logs and it would try to tell what has happened what during your ansible run completely so what my recommendation would be that everyone here might have executed ansible minus ping all okay and try to do one ping to one machine and enable triple v logging and try to see what happens that will explain how ansible works that will explain how ansible works if you can make out the steps of what it is doing then it becomes very simple for you to tell it as a workflow okay so ansible ela work ayindi ani cheppadaniki entakande better vele okay and there is one more thing which which i want to also check okay ansible minus m and i want to use a module called as setup on db server it has written me many details right and let me have a look at these details closely so what is the module which i have run setup okay what it has collected it has collected something called as ansible facts and what are those ansible facts the ip address of the machine which i have i am speaking to is this ipv6 is this okay ansible architecture is this okay and it has collected many details about that machine okay and these details are called as facts okay and if you want to do anything on that machine you can use this facts internally somewhere in your playbook okay for example uh, i want to create a file where i need to enter active user of this machine so probably ansible or user id ansible underscore user underscore a uid is a variable name this variable name if i know how to use it in my playbook dot yml file my problem will be solved because this will give me the value of that and i would replace this with that okay make sense yeah so ansible collects these things called as facts okay and this is done with every step automatically whenever you are executing ansible this is part of your execution but if you don't want this to happen we have written become yes right and then you can say gather facts no 
gather underscore facts to be no so that your executions will be faster because ansible will not try to get or pull these details from your server okay so, but this is enabled by default okay if you want you have to disable it by writing an entry over here okay which is gather underscore facts no if you don't write it the default value of it is yes and with every ansible command you are trying to execute it would try to execute this or it would try to fetch the facts of the variable and if you want to see what are the variables facts you can use the same command which i have used ansible minus m setup and give what is the host group which you want to okay so this will be done as part of as an intermediary step along with everything but if you want sometimes on production servers we don't want all of that stuff because we might have already set up a monitoring system for that so we we might not use it so in this cases on production playbooks sometimes you would see this if they are very critical in terms of performance then you might come across gather underscore facts as no fine so let us also continue further okay so and there is something called as copy module okay sounds interesting let us see what is this okay ansible module copy i am spending time on all of this just to show you that even if you have to work on a newest module which we have not discussed today which has created probably after 6 months it is easy to do that the only thing which you need to know is what is the purpose of that module and to execute it anyway there will be help there will be examples so now let us just look into it ansible copy module copy module copies file from a local or a remote machine to the location on the remote machine okay and how can i do that so there are something called as attributes do you want to take backup by default the value of backup is this content is no decrypt do you want to en enable any kind of decryption okay destination directory mode all of this okay and what is the important stuff out of it where is yes i think i missed out destination is yes is it so destination is a mandatory property we have to give whenever we are working with copy module and always the easier way to understand it is go with examples now basically what is trying to tell is you trying to copy a file from here to here okay the same example but he is using the symbolic link now okay so we got the whole essence of it right copy module is basically used to copy files from one place to another okay so shall we try yeah so let me quickly write one module okay i would do it in visual studio code i'll, I'll not be able to do it in over there so let me close all of these editors no i don't want to save anything and yesterday i think we have created classroom something right classroom examples yes so i'd be creating a new file over there okay commonly used modules dot yml okay so since it is a structure we would be following this hyphen host let me do it on all if i want i'd change it okay and then become s yes okay and then task so what is the first task which i want to do i want to start a task which is okay copy module okay so module is copy and then in the copy there are two important things which i need to write one is source the other one is destination and in the destination who is the owner and all of that right so i'll not be worried about the owner mode and all of that i would be worried about only source and destination okay so what i would do is okay so 
So let us copy this my inventory file. Okay, onto that machine. Let us see whether it works or not. Okay. So my path is SRC, right? SRC. SRC is home Ansible my inventory and destination is home Ansible my NV my NV copied just to have the stuff okay now let me copy this okay and let me see whether it behaves the same or not okay whatever as what we are thinking so how can it disconnect आ जियो केबल ये तो उन्नत तो ना दा तीसरा मरना ना आ जियो दे ये तो डिवाइस को ना दा इन इन इंटरनेट ने रात्रि बहुत वाइज जुड़ी जी बच्चा मरना मामल मंचल ले लेर दिन Pardon me? Hmm. Source means local system, destination means uh, remote system. Okay. So let us test and find out whether it is fact or not. Okay. And password basically we would be giving while executing the command itself, right? So password. अनलेन कार बोटला तो मौका दाना। ओके। गैस, आई थिंक दर दर इधर नेटवर्क ड्रॉप या प्लीज बेर विथ मी। इफ दिस हैपेंस, दैट विल बी एंड ऑफ आर क्लास। नेक्स्ट टाइम नेटवर्क नॉट कनेक्टेड, दैट इज दैट इज द विल फिनिश स्टॉप आर क्लास देर। ओके। सो फाइन। Well, the problem is the flow will be disturbed. We are executing a command and suddenly something. See. Okay. So. Okay. And. Now I want to get into playbooks folder and vi at the test.yml file. I don't want to write that huge name over here. Okay. Even the it's okay. Fine. I want to run this file. Okay. Now let me run this with Ansible hyphen playbook. And then I would be giving minus capital K because it has to ask me for a password. Okay. And then what are the other things which I need to give? Just a playbook file? Nothing apart from that? 
hyphen hyphen m is whenever you are running as ad hoc command but this i am running a playbook okay so yeah so let us just have minus v first okay if you want we can execute the same thing again and again right yeah so minus v and test dot main it asks for the password so what is happening Okay, it says that it has done it. So let us do it again. Okay, let us execute this again. Then I would log in into these machines and show you. Okay. This time, are you seeing change? Change is zero because what it says is that file is already there. And now let us log in into one of these machines. Okay, so. Let me log in into this machine. SSH. Okay. Are you seeing it? Yes. So, actually, file was in my control machine, and I have copied it to remote machine. Okay. But whenever you want to copy the file from the remote machine to the control machine, then you have to change the arguments. And the very machine only, very machine look copy here, and that big that that is bit critical. But whenever you want to copy a file from a local machine to somewhere on that machine, you have to easily use SRC, and SRC is a path of control servers file system. And whenever I say destination, destination is file system of your node, wherever you are trying to execute it. And now, if it has to copy any file, then I can use it, right? Now let us discuss on Tomcat's deployment. Okay. In Tomcat, how do we deploy it? We would have Tomcat, and Tomcat would have web apps folder. In that web apps folder, we have to copy a var file, right? So, can I use copy module for that? Yes. And after that, I have to restart Tomcat. So, I would install a Tomcat server, and then I would use a copy module, and then I would use service Tomcat start. So, that's a deployment, typical deployment. It 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 would be the same in most of the application servers. Paths might change, right? So, copy module is very much useful whenever you are trying to copy certain things from your machine. Okay. So slowly we'll come back to how do we download from internet. We'll also come back to that. Okay. But yes, yes, yes. See, basically we have created uh, whenever you are trying to copy, it has to execute two commands. It has to basically download it and it has to create a file also. Creating a file and then have downloading the content, so that's why it is it is giving it as that. Yeah. Okay. So now, whenever we are trying to work on file copies, okay. So you have to just basic basically your decision should be: Am I copying it from a local system or am I downloading it from internet? Copying it from local system blindly go to this. And let us just go through the documentation of it once again. Okay. so i don't see anything about internet but if i have to copy the modules i can blindly go with it and whenever you are creating a file you can give basically the file credentials who should be the owner for that and what is the group id for that 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 anyway is is uh, done but if you don't give anything it would be created with the user who is considered to be your who is the thing which you have configured for the ansible's execution in my case that files credentials would be With the name of the Ansible user, yeah. But if you want to change it, you have to give these details for it. Yeah, fine. Now there is something called as get underscore URL. So let us go to that module. Okay. Ansible module get underscore URL. Okay, so this was the same statement which I was discussing about. If it is copying from your local system to your production servers, use copy module. But if it is about downloading from internet, use get underscore URL. Okay, for the sake of simplicity, what I will do is let me see if I have any downloads over here. Okay. 
I want the thing to be simple but not okay let me download this winp cap itself what is problem with that okay and then execute it download this content you would be you if you want you can or let, let us make it somewhat relevant okay so jenkins not i let us assume that i want to download jenkins onto my linux machine jenkins war all right so download okay and whenever you come over here so i want to download a war package okay so let me go to the history for me uh, this is the easiest way to find out uh, copy the locations yeah copy link address done so now what is that we have to do so let us look into it i want to download this file on to certain folder of my node okay so backup i don't want any backup okay destination yeah this is the property where you would be telling where do you want it from okay let us come down url okay so i'd be using a module called as get url and then i would be basically giving the url address and then the destination and to understand it better i would also refer it to examples so that it is easy for me to understand so the, i'll see the first example he had given something called as url and that url is trying to download it and at c some location and uh, basically has given the mode i am not well not be giving any modes okay you can go through the documentation to understand what is the default mode but if you want you can set the mode okay you can set it to whatever uh, basically mode file modes which you want to okay so shall we continue now yeah i'd be using a module name which is called as get underscore url for downloading from http and i'll be using get underscore url in get underscore url the property is url will become the source so directly copy your link over here and then destination destination is home ansible jenkins dot or that's what i wanted okay so just going through that table makes the life simpler yeah fine let me copy this let me get into this machine i'll commit all of this to the github there is no need for you to write this playbook okay if you want you can just write the module's name the playbook anta github.com slash a square zone and in that there will be ansible zone and in that there will be a folder called as classroom examples you can go through that okay so vi okay not here cd uh, okay this is not our machine right this is the node which i am working on so vi test dot yml and in test dot yml i should be basically copying only this oh man that's the reason why i copy complete files i'm very bad at this okay i think i have done the correct job name seems like on the same column right yeah fine now again the same command ansible and i am running a playbook so ansible hyphen playbook and then i want it to ask password which is minus key minus k and then this time let us have enable uh, verbose logging 
okay and then after that i want to run a playbook which is test dot yeah okay if you see it it would also show you the commands what it has executed to achieve whatever you have written in ansible so if you go into triple way that's that's the advantage okay so now let us do the same job what we have done earlier log in into the machine and then check whether there is jenkins.war or not are we seeing jenkins.war so we are given home ansible jenkins.war so i have logged in into my node and i am seeing this file so in your case if you want to download anything from internet in if you want to put it in tomcat then you would be giving the path as var lib tomcat7 web apps slash jenkins.war that's it so install tomcat download this from war restart tomcat your jenkins server is ready so that that's the whole whole aspect which you are so these modules help us in automating the activity or in doing the linux activities which you generally do yeah fine no it will not because we are if the if you want to download it onto the control machine then you need you need to have an entry in inventory which is called as local host see actually control server is very loosely coupled in ansible so in 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 case of any other configuration management tools it is it is very easy to find out because you would have one control server and it that's how all the aspects work but here control server by design is loosely coupled even your and my laptop both can be control servers for the same configuration what is it 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 requires it requires an inventory it requires ansible to be installed and it requires some playbook files so if i put all of this in git whoever clones that git okay and whoever is in the network can try to execute the same commands with as long as he has ansible in this machine right so it's a loosely coupled architecture so it's difficult for me to just by look at names and tell what is the control server and all okay because there is no speciality in control server but if it is ansible tower yes okay ansible tower is an enterprise version of this where where it where he gives some server components so that is easy to identify but this open source version no we can't we can't just tell yeah fine so then https passwd ht password module line in file module ping we have used it right service also we have used it okay script yum also we have used it okay anarchive anarchive module what what do you think that that could be zip files right download a zip or a tar file and try to unextract from that i am not got, getting into it okay and line in file is a important module and http ssd wd is an inter, important module which which i'd be discussing but rest of the things yeah probably i'll show you script and shell modules yeah but rest of the things i would not be touching into them you just go through it you you have you have got the flair of it right just go into each and everything and try to understand what it does and basically write a very simple file along with that and you would understand what it is doing and if you if you have enough time enable triple v and you would also know the equivalent linux command what ansible has converted your your uh, playbook into so that's how it operates fine now i'll continue on these modules basically tomorrow I'll, i'll not do it in this way but what i want to do is let us let us do some activity which really makes sense okay so just remind me on this uh, tomorrow yeah saying about those two modules http sswd and line in file i don't want to discuss everything at one shot okay so what i would do is i'm interested in this okay so let me do one important commands execution okay let us look at this module first ansible module 
setup. This module will help us a lot in taking decisions. Okay. Gather facts about remote host. We have seen that Ansible minus M setup and all of that. Right. So in that there is something called as filter. Okay. So we would be using that filter to understand certain details of Ansible. But for now, what you do is Yesterday you remember me writing uh, two different playbook files, one for Ubuntu and one for Red Hat. Okay, so I don't want that to happen. So for that, what will be the factor which will decide whether I have to run yum or apt-get? If it is Ubuntu, then you have to execute apt-get. If it is Red Hat or RHEL family, basically you have to execute yum. So first let me find out a variable in the fact which tries to tell me about that information. So for that I would be executing Ansible minus M setup and I want to run this setup on DB server. Okay. This is a Red Hat system. Okay. So let us closely monitor. Ansible underscore OS underscore family. Okay. Now, now Ansible M setup Ubuntu, right? Ubuntu is other group, whatever we have, if I'm not wrong. Okay. So let me get into Ansible underscore OS underscore family. So in case of Ubuntu, I'm getting this variable as Debian. And in case of Red Hat, I'm getting that value as Red Hat. Because apt, I want to generalize. But if you want to get into the operating system's name, you can also get that. You have to find the equivalent property for that. Okay. So, but if you are not interested in getting all of these things, right? So what you can do is you can just say minus A argument to it and filter equals to ansible underscore os star let us see it will just show me the stuff which is with os you should know the variable name if you know the variable name filtering it out is very simple okay for example i want to know all the variables okay which are, which starts with Ansible underscore I. I don't know what that I means. So let us just. So are you getting something with us? So it, it would basically filter out the results rather than you scrolling and looking into all of the stuff. Okay. So. Okay. This is a whole big list. Because there are many many things with this, right? Fine. So let us go back to our stuff. Ansible underscore OS underscore family. And then I would be doing it not on the one Ubuntu, but I would be doing it on all. Okay. So we have two possible values over here. Red Hat and Debian. Okay. So now let me write a file altogether a file okay so classroom examples new file i would write apache dot yml this time i don't want to tell which which os it is okay so three hyphens host all i am doing an installation so i want to become yes pass okay in the task name install apache on red hat for that i'd be using a module called as yum and in the yum there will be a property called as name httpd and then probably state present okay and now i want to write another stuff name install 
Apache on Ubuntu. Okay, this is something which you have done. I am just writing to, I am trying to write the same thing whatever we have done yesterday. Okay, Apache to state present looks good. But the problem with this is it will try to execute apt and m both on the same machine. Ila Raja Deleste, m on the on Red Hat machine. It would install m first and then apt later, so this playbook will fail. Okay. In case of Debian, it will not execute apt because m has, m there is, it doesn't know anything called as m. Okay. So this is the place where conditionals come in handy. Okay. So let us get into this conditionals. Okay, and you are street seeing a simple when, right? Yeah, when is like if. Okay, so are we writing when Ansible underscore OS underscore family? Okay, exactly the same thing. You have you have, you would see the same example over here also. Okay. So Ansible underscore OS underscore family is equals to okay. Similarly, here when Ansible underscore OS underscore family is equals to Now there is no need for me to write two different files for two different operating systems. So for whatever things that change, I would be writing this conditional around it, which I would call it as when. That's it. Okay. But in when you should know what is the condition. Okay. So for that, always the easier easier way is just go with setup module because most of the times we might need to take a decision based out of the different facts which Ansible is correcting, and to understand what are the different facts. Use Ansible minus M setup and give basically group's name in your inventory file, and then you would come in, come to know all of this stuff. For example, tomorrow you want to run as, uh, this step only when your free memory is greater than some MB. Okay, let us assume that is the case. Free memory, if it is greater than 500 MB, then only you have to execute this. Otherwise, you are not you are not supposed to execute this. Let us assume that this is a case that comes in your uh, configuration management. Okay, so how do you approach that? First, you would try to see the setup, okay, and then see if there is any variable which will tell about what is the free memory available, and then you would be writing a condition of when free, uh, whenever the free available memory is greater than or equals to 500 MB, then I would be executing this. Otherwise, I'll not execute. So that that's that's the kind of things which Ansible setup brings to you. Okay, so we will elaborate more on this. Okay. And we would look at, we would look into two other common modules which are line line in uh, file and HD password, and then possibly let us try to switch over to the next best thing which is handler. Okay, so for but for explaining handler, I would be basically using one Tomcat deployment so that it is easier for you to understand. Okay, so ensure that you have finished Tomcat as part of the work which which is given to you. Okay, and then uh, we would be deploying we will we'll deploy Jenkins itself. It's okay. We have Jenkins.war, right? Since we know how to download it, we would be using Jenkins.war and we would be using deploying it. And as part of that, I would be discussing an important aspect called as handlers. Fine? Interesting? Okay? Or irritating? Yeah, this is the most easiest configuration management tool. Okay? You look at any other configuration management tool, it is going to be tougher than this. Definitely not simpler than this. Okay, this is the most simplest tool, and this is the most simplest configuration management tool liked by admin community. If, if you speak with any admin community and and try to discuss them with along with the line saying that Ansible or Chef, what is that you prefer? Okay, most of the people will try to answer that it is Ansible. So yeah, yes. Hmm. All yeah okay okay. Hmm. 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 See, you want to install Red Hat using Ansible. Is that possible? Yes. 
see are you saying you want to install an operating system or an application software application software what let us assume that you want to install java does that work work good for your example yeah so in the first case you want i have said all so i have let us assume that three servers one red hat and two ubuntu like exactly the same setup whatever i have so first time i do try to install java on on all of them next time you are executing the same script okay and what is the mode which you have followed for installation is it apt or is it yum let us assume that is the scenario i'll come back to uh, different possibilities later if it is apt or yum it is item potent next time it will not try to install java okay but let us assume that you have installed java by downloading the tar file and using commands even that is possible okay java can be installed by downloading the java binaries and then executing rpm minus i and all of that but if you follow that approach it will try to re execute all of that until unless if you have you have to strongly guard it with when statements yes gather facts you can skip it there is no problem in that as i said in production servers you would definitely skip it okay but next time what 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 do you think takes time if you put as app it will not take time because it has to just search an app package to find out whether it is available or not but if it is about downloading something yes it might okay but it depends on what is the module which you have used and what is its strategy it is not the same thing uh, it is not the same thing for everything for example in get underscore url right okay if you want to download the jenkins dot url again so our basic intention might be saying that okay to download and then verify it will not do that it will verify based out of checksums yes so it will be faster okay tomorrow if i have gone with some other model where it doesn't do this then it will become more time taking it, it depends you have to take this decision based out of the model which you are using and what is its item potency factor it's it's not same for everything and generally we would get this problems whenever you are using third party models because these are pretty much stable and they are optimized they don't eat up much of most of your times until unless you are using non item potent modules if it is non item potent modules yes they blindly execute it in in our case whatever we have discussed till now command does that command does that and tomorrow shell is going to do that and script is also going to do that it is not going to check for item potency so there yes but in other cases no that will not be a problem because even the checking factor of it is very fast it has they have optimized to compare files they don't compare contents they compare hashes so it's 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 all optimized yeah playbook can i show this yeah so let me commit this initial yeah yeah just ask me Hmm. Okay, okay. But if it is on a Red Hat machine, and the second condition you are telling that you don't want to give it. If for where yum ka apt ka. Okay. So let us assume that I run it on Debian machine. Okay. So yum module, yum module cannot execute on. Debian, so your complete playbook execution will stop. Okay, let us speak about Red Hat case. Yum will be executed perfectly, so your installation is done. But still, it will show it as if it is an error. So that's why you have to write a when condition. Yeah, it might not impact your system. Yes, it will stop executing on next one. Yeah. Okay. so let me just see the questions on the web i i think these are the people who are very much irritated uh, today with network connections we have gave only destination path but only we didn't give any host name how will it copy so because the host name is in inventories destination path the copy module he was he is trying to speak about the copy module and get url module in both the cases if you see my command was host and in host i have given all so it is trying to do it on all the machines which are part of my inventory okay playbook examples are not in uh, blog is that my have read it correctly playbook examples will not be in the blog they will be in the github just go to github.com a square zone and then there will be you would be seeing something called as ansible zone 
you would be seeing the contents or files uh, there more than what we have discussed because still we have certain ansible to be done yeah so uh, the values and parameters are predefined right these values are editable so what do you mean by okay module values okay see there are certain things which are fixed there are certain things which are not for example uh, you are working on a source module source module except expects the value to be in string it is not fixed you can give any string okay if you have not given a file path there if you have written something else then it might fail while execution but there are certain things like state which have predefined values where you cannot edit those values it depends on what is a uh, parameter which you have chosen yeah yeah what what yes 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 yeah okay what do you achieve after editing because those are all binary files yes yeah you, you can write your module yes you can write your module yeah how to copy files from uh, remote to remote yeah please uh, virbhadra i think you can help me out there there is a table around there and there is also an example of how to basically do it from remote to remote go through that table and if you don't find anything try to tell it try to then tell it to me i'll, I'll look into so i don't want to uh, feed anything just go into the table of any module and you would see all the possible options i have just given you a very basic introduction of how to work on it there is many things to explore right fine is there any where where we can store the logs of our execution absolutely you can do that and if you want to enable it go to the ansible.cfg file and then they will, you would be seeing the path of the logs where it can be enabled and there you can enable the debug uh, the normal log level do you want by default the log level to be verbose yes and they would be stored in a file for that you have to play with a file called as hc ansible ansible.cfg go over there and there will be an entry for logs files and just give a path whatever you are comfortable with that yeah okay so let me commit this so that uh, you can work or you can use this yeah reveal in explorer oh man okay so you can go into this path of github.com slash a square zone slash ansible zone yeah and in examples classroom examples you have all the files whatever i've written in the class okay but if you want to explore further there are many other folders also okay so this, this, this is the work which I have done in the other classes also. So you can see everything over here. Fine. So that's it from my side. Get, oh, it is 8.40 already, right? Yeah, we are getting late for uh, AWS class. So fine. Uh, AWS class will start from uh, start in uh, 10 minutes from now. Yeah.